All right, we are back, and what an exciting episode. I got my mother. I got another one of my mothers, Lisa, <laughs> Debbie, Miss Debbie, Mom. How are we doing, ladies? Good to see you. We're good tonight. Just overcoming COVID, so I'm great. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Have a Still negative ring, ring, I see. Huh? <laughs> What is that, the second of the last three birthdays that have been canceled for COVID? Correct. But we were back on for this weekend to celebrate. Now we this, are. this is your time of year to get sick, Lisa. Uh, I know. AJ says we have to move my birthday to the summer, but we got too many birthdays in the summer as well. My half birthday would be same time as my daughters in law and Rover. Didn't miss them this time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Miss Debbie, wouldn't that be a good idea, just like rescheduling her birthday to, I mean... Well, I think so, because when I texted her happy birthday and she tells me she's sick, I was like, okay, this is not good. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's together for the holidays and all together, and then a couple weeks later, it's my birthday. And that's what, and it's all spread around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're feeling better. I am. Same Thanks. here. So everyone, I want to take these two wonderful people and bring them on to talk about mental health and parenting. Now, they have years of experience, I know firsthand from both of them. And I think that not only have they been utilized before on asking, you know, advice or looking for resources or you name it, but I, I think in general, it's been through a lot of hardship as well. And, and maybe there's some insight, Mom and Miss Debbie, that, that you know, we can talk about today that maybe we didn't have 10 years ago. Um, you know, that's my thoughts. What do you guys think? I agree. Um, I know your, I'm going to say your diagnosis was 10 years ago. It's almost 10 and a half years now. <laughs> Look at already what month we're in and what year we're in. Mm -hmm. um, but it was sort of, at the time, I was like, bipolar? Bipolar. I know of a couple of celebrities who are diagnosed bipolar. I don't know anybody personally, but once it, you were diagnosed, all of a sudden we're hearing from friends. We're hearing from family. We're getting resources that, you know, I sought out, but also that people were, you know, giving to us as well that I never heard of or never dove into it because I didn't need to, but it seemed like it was sort of not discussed. Well, that was the problem. It that wasn't was, discussed. Yes. It was yes. nobody talked about it. People were afraid to talk about it because of the stigma that was along with it. So because that was the case, we didn't have the resources. Yeah. We didn't have a place to go. But there were resources. It just wasn't um, like out there as much as it is now. Definitely. It, or, wasn't, it wasn't publicized. And people it, weren't freely talking about it. I also put it this way. Whenever you go and you buy a new car, all of a sudden, you never heard of this car before. You get this car, then all of a sudden, you see it on the road all the time. It's sort of like it's the same thing for you, AJ. It was like, okay, I don't know many people who are bipolar. All of a sudden, it's on television and TV shows. Every, there's always a character who's bipolar. Uh, mm -hmm. Then it was all of a sudden, friends and family were coming out. Well, you know, this one is. And I said, well, why can't, didn't you talk about it? Um so it's kind of strange. It was sort of, it's kind of a weird comparison, but that's how I looked at it is that, you know, never knew her, never heard of that car before. Never really knew much about bipolar before until it happens to you. And then the resources are there, but again, did you know, but is it really publicized? And I really think it was more publicized and more and more is coming out ever since we were all, uh, in house with COVID, back and forth because people that were quarantined, yes, it amplified it and yeah, it made yeah. it worse. So we had to do something about it publicly. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. it's uh, it's a it's a big full circle in the last ten and a half years of what we're seeing. Totally. Yeah, I agree. And and to that point, and uh, you know, Miss Debbie, speak up if if you have something to add here. But like to that point of being full circle, back ten and a half years ago, I would say that there wasn't that many resources that are now today because it maybe wasn't as relevant. And you could say a lot of things because COVID, 
or just in general, like, you know, the different types of social movements and uh, education and, and everything that was going out there. And, and I don't think that that was such a, I would say, uh, I guess, a bad thing on educators or, you know, just in general. I do believe if, if I'm, you know, wrong, correct me, but you guys came from a time where it was suck it up and shut up. And, you know, we came from a time where, uh, you know, me, Alan Frank and all of us guys uh, and ladies, you know, we came from a time where we saw our parents their entire life suck it up and shut up. And, and so these inner feelings weren't talked about. They weren't. And I don't think that's that was necessarily um, bad practice. I just think it, it comes with time and, and everything does come up in time and change happens slowly. Um, but like you said, though, mom, it's been extremely relevant. Um, in the past few years and, and certainly happy that we're on the right side of that history and, and helping that. I yes. mean, I got a taste of where you could get help for children after my son Al was diagnosed with his heart condition. Yeah. Um, he was a teenager. He was 16 years old, thought he was healthy. That hits him. We're in the hospital at Children's Hospital in Philadelphia, and they're like, you need to see the psychiatrist for your case because you need to talk to somebody because your whole life is just going to be turned upside down. And he, of course, was not responsive at the time, but thank God that changed over years. But I got a big education at that point through the medical system and what was available for young people. Mm -hmm. I would have never known that yeah. if he didn't have his problem and then suffered from the depression afterwards and the anxiety would never have known it. Mm -hmm. But because I had the heart condition and the doctors were there, it was made available to us. Yeah. And what an interesting time that we all, you know, went through and tried to support Al. I mean, that's a significant time that I don't, I don't think I've ever heard of other than Al's situation. And, and I honestly think just looking back towards that, you know, in general and talking with students of recent years and talking with people, you know, it's one thing to be informed. It's another thing to be empowered by the information that you're provided. And, you know, maybe as a 16 year old, it's hard to be empowered by such troubling news of your future and your aspirations. So it doesn't surprise me. It's like that, but there's got to be more empowerment in this, you know, world rather than just, Hey, informing, like you said, mom, there's someone that's bipolar, uh, depression, anxiety on every, every, every ch TV channel, every show mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. all there, all, all representations of all cultures. And I, I like talk about this and I've written about this, that like everyone has the power in their hand of their little computer they have in their pocket called an iPhone to get help right away. But being empowered to do so is completely different. And that, you know, it takes a lot. Yes. Yes. So, Ms. W, you talked about like getting more information and mom, you, you took classes at Nomni, but I know, Ms. W, you've done a few things over the years consistently to just try to improve um, your education on different things to help support your sons. Well, uh, being, you want to like touch base on that? Sure. Being that my profession before retirement was education, I had the opportunity with my job to take classes on mental health, which was very helpful. And being that I work for the same district that my son went to school in, I was able to channel different networking and get that information. But I'm constantly reading, constantly doing something about it so that you know how to actually how to parent your child that has some kind of mental health problem. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no playbook for that. There isn't a book that says, there's, there aren't really parenting books per se that tell you the day to day. If you think about that, even when you have a baby for the first time. Yeah. But having to be told that you've got a child that has a problem that you feel like you can't fix. If they fall down and skin their knee, 
you put medicine on it, clean it up, put a Band-Aid on it, and go their merry way. If they break a bone, you set it, and it's fixed. Two things that happened to me were when I was told he had this cardiomyopathy, I couldn't fix it. I did research about it. I did everything. I couldn't fix it. Then on top of it, he gets slammed with becoming severely depressed. Mm -hmm. Well, thank God I could find out things that you could do for that to help. And I had to learn how to be a parent all over again with him. I had to learn what to say and what to do. I had to become empathetic to how he was feeling. Basically, I put myself in his shoes to know how he was feeling because I have never suffered from depression, thank God, but he did. And I read books about it. I worked with him. I had him tell me how he was feeling. And that all helped to the point where he's a thriving adult and I can be his mother, his friend, his helper. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really Mom, maybe you can touch a little bit about your experience about the continuous process of supporting and learning and, and kind right. of nurturing mother style from, from your life. Well, again, um, not knowing what to do, hearing about this from some saying, what do you mean AJ's Bob? He's never been depressed. He's been energetic. He's been happy. He's been an athlete. And then to see that depression, we're like, that's not AJ, you know, but that was the illness. If they told me that day that you had cancer, and it's sort of where I go as a parent, it, it's not just that you have a mental illness. If you had a physical illness, I would have done the same thing. Go, as you said, David, find out what I could. For me, the source was NAMI and the family to family. And it was parents siblings, spouses of people who have someone with a mental illness. And I remember going there, I wanted to go like right away and everybody's talking about their family member and how long they've had it. I was literally there and said, it's been just weeks. And then it dawned on me that this is for you for the rest of your life. So it was helpful to talk to other people, to be in these classrooms, to learn about the different mental health illnesses. Um, it was enlightening. It was at the same time sad. It was the same time. I remember Debbie, you just said about having empathy. I remember coming home one night from one of the classes and AJ, you and your dad and, and Christian were actually in the basement watching a hockey game. And, you know, you were very serious and you were never this very serious. And this is when you're first diagnosed. And I came downstairs and you asked me, so what did you guys talk about today? I said, well, it's about having empathy for your family member who has this mental illness. And the whole room just got quiet and I said, how the heck with that? And you left. And at that point, I knew you'd be okay. Mm -hmm. um, your father and Christian, I think, went with Stark White thinking, what is she saying to him? <laughs> but I knew at that point it was something, I could just have a joke with you and, and you got it. And... Um, I, I just think that you have to look at any illness the same way. You have to look at it for how you can help, when you need to step back. You don't want to overshadow any child or family member. We have family members who are dealing with cancer. I'm sure they get tired of hearing, how are you feeling today? How are you feeling today? How are you doing? You know, it's, it's the same thing. So you just need to learn from experience. And again, if you don't have that experience, I don't have a child with cancer. I have a child with a mental illness. I have a child with a heart problem. But I have family members that have other ailments. And there's a point where you're just like, just step back and see what they need as well. Maybe not overshadow too much. Uh, maybe just listen a little more. And realize there is places to go for help. There are people that are learned have the trainings. We're not those people. We we have experiences. We don't have the backgrounds. But there are so many resources out there that can help you no matter the situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um just speaking from experience and I think I've read it like an article that kind of backs this up, but like something the best you can do, I think you know, with a loved one in it, you know, mental health crisis is just like being there and and in support. 
And I just, I remember this one night of just screaming in agony in like my bed and you coming and helping me and like helping me like kind of cry it out. Like I'm screaming, why can't I be normal? Why can't I be normal? And like, you had absolute no answers for me. You knew you were never going to have answers for me, but you're just going to support me. And, you know, hey, we're going to get through this. And look, look, you know, like whether you guys know this or not, but four years ago today, I was admitted into the hospital. And ever since I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder, this has been my longest span of not being in a hospital. So, so I think being there and supporting me, especially, you know, speaking to both of you, really, because both of you have been so supportive to me. You need to learn with your child and what's going to help them. You need to learn continuously to be a lifelong learner. Is that we've had so many conversations about this and the growth mindset. And even if we're going to throw dad in here too, I, he's just continuously tried to understand and has not been closed minded to, you know, what he might have thought was my diagnosis and continue to be there for me and understand me to a point where recently in the past six months, he told me, listen, things are just different for you. And it, it was like, you know, I was talking to a therapist type of advice, but it's just someone that's been there for me. And it's not the magical answers the parents are looking for, but we can speak to experience here that that's really in the long run what someone does need. And it's hard. We've, we've, your dad and I have both talked and t spoken to other parents. And there is no set mold. Everybody's different. Yeah. Every illness is different. Every result is different. Um, Everyone with the same diagnosis deals differently or has different exactly. symptoms. Exactly. So there is no one scenario for anyone. No one is the same. No matter what uh, yeah. illness, no matter what personality, no matter what scenarios. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is that there are people there to help. Yeah. And yes. as a parent, as you said, you can only be there for your child as much as he or she wants you to be there, as much as you have the capability to be there for them. You know, sometimes it may be too hard to, to sit there and watch things. Um, so you may need to take a break, tap in the other parents and you, all right, I, 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 I need a break. <laughs> so, and again, it's just not with mental illnesses. I can't stress that much as, uh, as much you could have had cancer and, and I would not be able to sit there and watch you suffering with that and say, okay, you got to tap in. I, I, I need a break, you know, from sitting at the hospital or whatever. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, it's a partnership. What you're saying too, with the partnership and, you know, leaning on each other as uh, spouses, I, I think it's good to remember that you're only human too, mm -hmm. you know, like that there's only the only so much that you can do, not that you should, you know, get, ever give up, but realize that these are small actions that need to be repeated over time to have these incremental improvements. And, and I think that's, that's super important. Um, something I did want to ask you, Miss Debbie and Mom, I want you to chime in too because I think you're extremely approachable. But Miss Debbie, you're not known to Miss Debbie by everyone. You're known, but most people by Mama V. So <laughs> I think one, it's it's a different day and age now than it was ten and a half years ago, twelve mm -hmm. years ago. We were in high school, but I do find you extremely approachable, and I know that your children find it very easy to talk to you about things. Is there any type of advice you have for like a parent out there? Just be so inviting in a way that it's not overwhelming and really kind of just accepting. You, you need to remember that you might be the parent or you might be the, the elder person in a situation, but it doesn't mean that the young person whether it be your child, somebody else's child, is incompetent or 
immature to the point where they don't understand. I treat all people the same, no matter what age you are, whether you're a child. I might care for a small child differently, but yet I still talk and reason with them the same way I do to an older child or an adult. And I think it's, you just need to listen to them as a person, approach them as a person, person to person, not elder to, to child. Um, I'm no better than anybody else. They're no better than any, it, it's an equal playing field that I approach people on. And I put myself in their shoes. I try to walk their walk or try to understand what they're going through. That's the advice that I give. It's just be yourself. Don't be, don't preach. Yeah. Listen. It's important to listen to somebody. You can give advice. You could, you could say, well, this is what I would do. But ultimately, it's that other person's choice to what they're going to do with the information that you give. But just be open and treat them as an equal. Yeah, that's what it is. A lot of what you were saying um, made me think of a coaching class that I used to take. And it essentially, they said, when you're teaching young children, you're supposed to get down to their level. So like eye to eye. So like you can connect with them. And it's almost like emotionally, you've been doing that with mm -hmm. everyone. And mm -hmm. you haven't stopped of getting to someone's level. And you've kind of continued to do that. And I think that makes you you know, extremely approachable, trusting, and, 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 and really just like loving in the, in the way that you're willing to kind of take on anyone there. Um, so thank well, you for that. You. You thank you. That. So I did, when we were talking about that, I did think about one thing, one trait that my mom has that I think is really good and it's her patience. So I have this way of throwing maybe bigger ideas at my family members that maybe they haven't thought of, or maybe it, it may come off a little bit out of the norm, even though I could be thinking it for months or years. Mm -hmm. My mom notoriously, even if it's a small idea, but if I'm throwing an idea at her or, or just a thought, she goes, deep breath, okay, <laughs> and she processes it. <laughs> so... I used to think that I'm as respond to this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I think I think um, which has been nice because in general being bipolar and having an experience of just not understanding my emotions and wondering what people think, I think we've grown <laughs> to such a comfortable truth of hey, I can't just fly off the handle at AJ. AJ, you got to articulate as best as you can and understand that you might get a long, okay pause and mom is just, just trying to, you know, process it. So I guess my question to you, mom, is that patience is, was forced upon you with me and my road living with bipolar disorder. I mean, how do you process that patients on like a daily basis that others can kind of adapt? Um, I don't have it so much with work anymore, but when it comes to my family, it's a different story. Yeah. <clears throat> you have to, and I don't know if I got this from Anami. I don't know if I got it from just watching videos or anything. Um, but I just know that you just have to, I think in any case, don't react. You have to sit back. You have to think. You have to think how you're feeling. You have to think how I'm feeling. And say, if my words are going to upset you more, um, is it better for me to say nothing? And then when things are calmer, we have a conversation. It's just a matter of, it, it, it is something you learn. Because as a parent, you're like, what are you talking to me like that for? And I'm your mother. Um, which could be the reaction that all of us had at one time or another. Our parents had with us at one time or another, but it is something different with, um, I think anyone, I think you just have to now from now on, just step back. Things have changed so many ways, not just with your health, our society, our way of life. It's sort of like, you just can't react to everything. 
Yeah. I think you need to sit back and say, okay, how's this going to affect me? What will my response, how will my response affect this? Will my response be even worthy to be heard? Um, I, I guess that's it because it, it is definitely, I've learned that you just can't come back with what you really want to say. And that's really much everybody's life is. You just can't really react. You can think, think it out, talk it out. And uh, again, there is no wisdom here. There is no great wisdom here. There's no great wisdom with you, Deb. There's no great wisdom with you, AJ. There are resources to help us. Mm -hmm. And and again, some of those resources may not fit what we're looking for, but it's so important to know that they're out there to help us and to go to and to try to figure out the next steps. Yeah. I think that's a really good point. Um, you know, just like, hey, there's no there's no magic answer. And I'll say, like, there's two sides of this coin, right? And speaking as the son or child, you have to work with your parent as well. You have to consistently work with them. You have to understand, and you could ask all of my best friends, I tell them this, this was my number one lesson from therapy years ago, parents will be parents. You can never change that. And you have to understand that. You have to understand that, 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 and that's totally okay. That's more than okay. That's, you're lucky to have parents if that's your situation. Um, so I think maybe, you know, even as a parent, if you're not getting that mutual, it doesn't have to be 50, 50, but like a 20, 80 or a 70, 30, if you're not getting commitment to like work and move forward together, I would check them I said, Hey, listen, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? I want to, I want to make this work. I want to do things for you, but it does take both sides of it. And, and I think both of you would tend to agree to that. Yes. So, all right. So let's wrap up with this. I wanted um, to mention something that my mom just mentioned there that, you know, the wisdom, the advice, really the best advice that we can give you is to start talking, start working together. And when the time comes, reach out for help. And something that we've done at Team Garbo is we've put together a resource page that has a lot of Bucks County resources, but also national as well. There's a crisis hotline there. There's information of useful, helpful links. Um, there's even stuff for Bucks County of where you can go to get help right now. Uh, I, I think that's really important. Uh, both of you have mentioned how we were starving for information and I think that dad often too. And so I think when it comes to those resources, is there any like last bit of advice as parents of when to use that, how to use it, maybe who to reach out to? Um, first of all, say we, AJ, hmm, this one, I might lose it. Um, my pride in you for all the, all the work that you have done through the climb and through that resource page and, and the website. You have built it so greatly. Yes, you have supporters in the rest of Team Garbo, but you have really taken that to make it a, a significant uh, resource. I've shared it with people in different states. I was able to show them these videos. Um, my pride aside, which is enormous for you, uh, all I could say to anybody, do reach out. Do reach out for help. There could be uh, a local hospital yeah. that has a mental health group there for you. Yep. Your local police could have a support group also for those that are in need for mental illness. Uh, there are websites. There are great, great resources like NAMI. We are just blessed mm -hmm. to be NAMI of Bucks County. I can say that wholeheartedly, but there are many great NAMI resources throughout the United States. Um, Debbie, what other ones can you think of? What are schools? Schools. I was going to say schools. Definitely don't, as a parent, if you have a, a child, young, middle school, high school, young adult, don't be afraid to speak to people about it. 
don't be afraid to go to their schools, whether it be college, high school. There are resources there. There are people there to try to put you in the right direction. I think that's important to know. It's Don't keep it a secret. You're not helping your child any by keeping it a secret. Also, your doctors, your pediatricians, they can put you in the right direction also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really good. One thing I just want to come up the top with to share as well, there are warm lines, not hot lines. There are also warm lines. If you have questions that maybe you're not in a crisis and you're a parent and you want to talk with someone, there are people there. Do not wait until it's too late. I can tell you from experience, when it's too late, it's too late. Mm -hmm. so it's never too early to make a phone call to get information. Mm -hmm. um, I know that if us three all had the resources we had <laughs> ten and a half years ago, that things wouldn't be drastically that much different, but a lot less painful. And, and I think that's a huge mission of ours is to make sure that they're not suffering as maybe as much as we had in the past. Correct. Fantastic. Proactive, not reactive. Absolutely. Well, if there's anything else, speak forward. And if not, let's just wrap this up. It was a really good one, guys. We love you. We always we do. do. I love you, honey. Love you both. Thank you so much for coming on. This was awesome.